Hello and welcome back to my very first devlog where I show some real progress on my Spiral-like platformer game. Let's do a quick recap on what I covered in my last video. We got some walking, running, jumping, flying, climbing, damage, health and life pickup, coins, checkpoints, and respawn. Last episode, I said we we're going to recreate a Spiral level in Unreal. One of my favorite games of the series is Spyro 3. I played it so many times for so many hours as a child. I chose to make a blank level, so I needed to add some of the basics, lighting and setup for the fog to have roughly the same color as the game. After a quick search online, I found the original map from the PlayStation 1 game, so I used that as reference. I figured sculpting in the detail on the landscape mesh would probably be the fastest way to go about making a rough layout. I trimmed it to size and got rid of some of the junk I thought I needed. I imported my character start and created a size reference testing it in the editor to make sure that i had it roughly correct next i hopped into the game and made some measurements using spyro as a reference to go off of the starting area is about 11 by 8 spiros and i just used spyro's body to measure it as roughly as possible um, so at this point, I duplicated my dragons to match the measurements that I figured out in game. And I also put them in a folder to keep it tidy. So I got to sculpting. The landscape editor is a very powerful tool. You can do a lot with it to set the building box for your project. I struggle with getting the foundation started when I get a big project like this, and I often go through a lot of iterations before I si find something that sticks. I tried and was excited, and I kept failing and failing, and... Uh, One hour later. Yeah, so then I realized Maya exists, and it's oh so easy for me to model here. So I popped in a plane and began modeling. I imported the map and sized it roughly to what I wanted. This is also a slow process too, but... It's not as slow as landscape sculpting for me. In what took roughly the same amount of time, I was able to finish the level and get it imported into the engine and do some playtesting. In engine, I previously imported some for a quick test. I re-imported these pieces and then sized them to what I needed. I deleted the old pieces, did a quick test, and modified the collision. In Spyro, you feel really closed in this area. My level was missing that, so I added some walls that have a dual purpose of creating boundaries a player can't escape. Usually these are invisible and mine will be with time. We color it a bright color so it stands out and isn't missed when we build the project. This is a trick in level design taught to me by a former teacher turned coworker on Kena. I used it in all of my levels. So after creating the walls, I placed around the level and created those boundaries. I did a lot more playtesting and tweaked it, then called it a day. Next episode, I'll either be adding a few more mechanics, like swimming and the flight power up, or refining this level a bit further, adding more of the background elements or things like trees. Anyway, see you next time.